So welcome back all of you. Nana here and then uh, we are into the next day's program on this fusion order management implementation and then uh, we are continuing our activity on this shipping execution as such. And uh, today morning, uh, Manoj had an issue and then uh, what happens there, uh, we just jointly uh, made an exercise on the vision instance actually. And then uh, we made some mistake here and there and then uh, ultimately what happens, uh, all, all the issues are resolved actually. So there is no pending ones. And so now vision instance is now working perfectly over here now. And so that what happens, you won't be having uh, much of a, what's called, doubt or uh, this thing on. So uh, the instance which I shared with you uh, long back, what happens, that is now being upgraded to 11 point, uh, 13 point, 18 point, 10 actually. And then uh, there, there are some structural changes actually. And so uh, I have a feeling that what happens, you may have to create the instance, uh, the structure once again, and then I do it now. Fine. Maybe uh, the financials might not have gone a, a change, but from the inventory org level, at least you may have to create uh, the fresh ones. Even the master org also you may have to create because what happens, the structure itself has got changed actually. So try and then do it. Otherwise, what happens, you work on the vision and then uh, try to uh, do everything else. So that way uh, you can do it now. <clears throat> go there. Go to the Fusion OM documents. Fusion OM worksheet now. Now we are into shipping execution actually. So we have completed what uh, the what's called the release sequence rule has been created, the pick slip grouping rule has been created. Then what happens? We have to now create the ship confirmation rule. Ship confirmation is the activity by which what happens you are going to lift it uh, from the carrier from the what's called the staging area into the what's called into the uh, what is called vehicle actually. So that has to be done now. So here, uh, if you go on and have a look at it again, I'm going to use this documentation now. <clears throat> and then you go to the order management. And then go to the so now we have seen the PR process as such. Fine. We have seen the PR process, shipping execution. So if you go on and see, this is okay. Uh, here in this place, uh, the PR process has got three parts. One is what ready to release, and then afterwards release to warehouse, and then I go to the stage to be confirmed. So here it is known as only stage. So we are going to begin our activity with the what? The ready to release to stage directly. Fine. We will not stop at this place at all. Fine. We will now go directly over there. Fine. You want us. So that one we are going to do. And then afterwards, we go there. <coughs> and then see the what's called the shipping rules. One. So on the uh, what's called, when you launch the pick release, the filtering zone, the prioritization zone, the grouping zone, everything will be coming into picture. And then finally, what happens? Uh, we will be in a position to complete the pick release process. Fine. The peak release process begins with the ready to release and then ends up at a staged area. Then next activity is what? Ship confirmation. We have to lift it and then keep it on the vehicle actually. Fine. So we are now going to see the ship confirmation rule. So in this place, what happens is there are multiple rules which are involved now. Fine. The RSR, the release sequence rule, the pick slip grouping rule has been created now. Fine. Go there. Now we are going to create a ship confirmation rule for the SC processes. So if you go and then see on this place, fine, go there. Okay. Now. <clears throat> if you see this now, fine. Go there. So on the what's called shipping, if you click on the shipping here, what happens? The PR process consists of what? A PR, fine. It is going to be creating a movement request now. In EBS, we call them as a move order now. And then a confirm picks. Right? So these two things put together will now make it as a stage. And then finally, what happens? We are going to ship confirm. Ship confirm on the vehicle. So the orders. So in this process, we have these rules now. Release sequence rule, pixel grouping rule. Then what happens? We have to create this rule also. And then uh, when I attended the training in Oracle, what they say is that what happens, uh, don't go for this rule at all for a normal ship confirmation process. You go for it only for a transfer order process. So let us now do this for a transfer order actually. Fine. We are going to move the material from the second door to first door uh, at a later exercise actually. So for which what happens, uh, we will now use the release rule actually. A release rule is nothing but a combination of what? The filtering zone, the prioritization zone, and then the grouping zone. Fine. Let us now do the release rule also. Fine. Let us now create the release rule over here now. Click on it. So let us now create the release rule. Click on it. You go there. Click on search. <clears throat> Here, what happens? You now go. What happens? Manage percentage. Release percentage. Rule percentage. Release rule. We want to do it now. So it's called manage pick wave release rules now. And click on it. So we are now creating a pick wave release rule over here now. So click on plus, <clears throat> we are going to create now, click on plus. 
I will be creating it for the second org, no, fine, not for the first org, no, fine, so I'll be creating it for the second org actually. So shift from organization will be for the from the second org to first org, fine, there's a D01 and then two. And normally for the first org, what happens, we don't uh, use it, whereas in EBUS we use it extensively, the pay release rule is used extensively, but here uh, that's what uh, they say. But again, what happens, if you feel some other method, what happens, you can always go into it. So shift from org is a D012, no, fine, go there, you want us. And then uh, here I will not give a name. I will not say what happens. Uh, release from D012. So always give a name, meaningful name so that what happens, you'll be able to understand it at late name very, very easily. What is and then here what I'm going to do is I will now give the filtering zone. The filtering zone consists of what the scheduled shift date, the this one, and then uh, what happens is starts and end, and then requested shift dates start and end now. So if you go and then see in this place, what happens in the filtering zone here, we are going to Filter the incoming by what happens at the sales orders or scheduled ship dates or requested date. And so, uh, here in this case, what happens, uh, we will be picking all, and so what happens, uh, no filtering is going to be involved in this. No point, so that we will not leave all the filtering criteria blank. The filtering criteria are not left blank as such. Then we go there, go to the prioritization zone. In the prioritization zone, I go to go there. I go, there, go down. So, uh, here also, what happens, there are so many filtering criteria. The item wise, we can filter, and then shipping wise, date, dates wise, we can filter now. Now you go to the options. Now. Fine. Filtering is almost blank. We always leave it blank. You go to the options area. Fine. Click on the options area. And then in the options area, what happens? I'm going to give my RSR and then PSGR. So the RSR which you have created as well as the PSGR, I'm going to get fine. So these two zones coupled together. So your release rule is a combination of the filtering zone, the prioritization zone, and then the grouping zone. Fine. We will now put our RSR as well as our PSGR on the options area. Fine. Go there. So release sequence rule. I'll now say D01 and then I'm going to tab now. That will be coming, and then I will not put D01 and then give it a that will be coming. So the RSR and PSGR are put on the second one. We'll say auto confirm picks now. So once when you make it as auto confirm picks, what happens if you go on and see this place? If you go on and see in this one, <clears throat> this one. So here, as soon as the movement request is created, the confirm picks also is done automatically. So that means what the PR process completes in one go now. So by auto confirm picks. So go there and then make auto one complete. No, go there. Create shipments. The shipment number will be created. This is known as a delivery in EBIS now. In EBIS, we call them as a delivery. And then here it is known as a shipment actually. And, go there. and then here, ship confirmation rules also there, fine. So it is not required actually, fine. Uh, we can put, otherwise what happens is a pick and ship. If you put it, what happens, it will be doing the pick and ship automatically. We can even make automatic pack as such, no, fine, go there. And then this is also done, fine, go there. With this much of information, what happens, uh, we can now save our release rule for the D012 arc where we are going to move the transfer orders from the second order to first order. And this is normally not used for a sales order pick. Fine, for a sales order pick. It is used for a transfer order transfer. Basically. And again, Oracle is, I ask, is it a strict, uh, no, 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 they, they, they say that no. It is a customary practice and so what happens, you can very well uh, overrule it. If you feel that what happens, you are now habituated doing in some other way, what happens, you do the shipping activity in whichever way you like. So we completed the release rule, fine. Create the pick way release rules now called here. Fine, go there. So it has got the RSR PSGR, auto confirm picks, and then shipment creation, and then automatic pack, and then no ship confirmation rule. Fine, go there. It is for this org actually. In the demand selection, I have not given anything. So filtering criteria is almost black. The filtering criteria is black. Click on seven close by which what happened? The release rule is now created. Now we come over here, come to this place now. Fine, go there. <clears throat> Where is my document? It's over here. I will go there. See the OM box sheet. So now I will now go to the what I have not written the uh, release rule. Yeah, release rule I have written afterwards actually. Fine, go there. So now we'll now do the ship confirmation. Fine, go there. So in this process, what happens? We are going to pick and then uh, pick it from the staging area and then keep it on the carrier. Actually, we take a copy of it down and go on and do it. <clears throat> on it now. Click on done now. And then we'll now do the ship confirmation rule. Fine, go there. So click on manage ship confirmation rule. Fine, click on it now. A ship confirmation rule is now going to be created. Click on plus. It is not created. We will now name it now. Fine, go there. It is what is called. Uh, 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 I will now say it is a D01. Right. Ship confirm rule. Now, ship what? You want to ship the requested quantities or the ship quantities? Now, fine. Again, it has got a variation now. Fine. Uh, I, I am going to test that now. Fine, go there. When I test it, I will now uh, show it also here. Also. 
in the ship quantities, if you say what happens, how much you want to ship, and then how, how do you want to do it? This I am to test now. So once when I test it, I will not show it to you. As of now, what happens? I'm not using it as a requested quantity. Okay, now, right? now uh, we if you want to override the shipping method, you can use it. Otherwise, what happens? You cannot put our own shipping method. So the shipping method can be our own method. <coughs> Packing flip is final. You are one second. What is no Diwali Pataka is now going on. So I have muted now. Find that. So whenever you want to speak, you can open up your mic and speak. Now, what happens? The document job sets. Fine, go there. The ship confirmation document. Here, what happens? I have a small uh, issue. Fine. Uh, what happens? Uh, what you want to print at the time of it. Fine. Now, saying ship confirmation document is the da default one. Whereas in EBS, it has got a functionality, better functionality. Here, I don't know where exactly it is there, actually. Fine. Where to specify the ship confirmation document, I'm unable to understand now. You may have find some uh, task basically for this. Uh, we will come to that a bit later. <clears throat> So close the shipment and then defer sending inventory updates to integrated applications. It is equivalent to interface strip stop. I'm not going to defer it now. So I'm not deferring it. So what happens? It'll be going in one go as such. The interface strip stop will be running in one go. So what happens? It will not be deferring it out. Fine, go there. So it is equivalent to what if you go and then see on the EBS now. Fine, go to the EBS and then go to the order management and then go to the day four. So here you can see ITS now. Fine, go there. <coughs> interface strip stop. Interface strip stop. So here, what happens is that if you defer it, it will never, what happens, it will never, uh, it will not wait for the customer's acceptance and then only what happens, it will be going to ship it. This is an interface strip stop actually. So this is known as a deferring of this now fine. So here, uh, if you do it, the ITS has to be run manually actually. Interface strip stop concurrent has to be run manually. It is known as a send shipment advice in EBS, in Fusion. In Fusion, we call this the concurrent as a send shipment advice. So only when it runs, what happens, it will be updating the order entry actually. The order entry will be updated on So in this case, what happens? I'm not deferring it actually. So I don't defer it. So that let it run immediately. Fine. The deferring is a lab exercise for you. Fine. You can even defer it and then see how it's going to work. So with this, what happened? The ship confirmation rule is now ready. Fine. Click on save and close now. Fine. I'm now creating the shipment for the remaining stage quantities that I have to experiment it. I'm not already done it now. Close shipment is what we will now as soon as then you keep it on this. What happens? The shipment gets closed now. I'm not deferring it. I'm not putting my shipping method now. Fine, packing is final, and then I'm not doing it. In this method, what happens? I will not show you in emails. We can do it very nicely. I don't know how to create a shipment document. It may be a standard document or not. What I get is now fine. Is what is you know go there. Click on seven post now. By which what happens? The ship confirmation rule is now done. Now the final activity is what the shipping parameters. Fine. We are doing the shipping parameters. Now. Go there. So the final activity is shipping parameters. Now. Go there. So the ship confirmation rule. What happens now? Before we do the shipping parameters, now fine. Go there. We will now create what the shipping document. Uh, what happens this one? Now, fine. Go there. Go to the manage shipping document job set rule. Now. Before which I will not show you about how it was in how it is in EBS. Now EBS is so simple. We can decide it now. Fine. Go to the shipping. You go to the setup now, and then you go to the what's called documents, and then here you go there, and then I will now make the document set so you know. This is the navigation now. Shipping setup documents document set is the navigation in EBS. Double click on it now. And then here, what happens? I will now make a document. Fine. D01, what happens? A pick document, docs it. I'm creating it now. It is for the pick release process. I can go there. Uh, go there. Application is what? Order entry. <coughs> but app, I will now give a percentage and then find out something. And go there. Something. And then I will now print two copies now. I can go there. Click on it now. <coughs> I will now say shift F5 and then copy the previous one. Go there. Go there. We have it up here. Fine. Go there. We have to put order entry only. Order entry. And then here I will not say uh, uh, what happens. Uh, I will not say pack percentage. Uh, something is coming from so uh, just for understanding purposes. What happens? I am not putting something, and then I will not put it. Right, go there. So these are the documents to be printed once when the pick release process is complete. Similarly, what happens? I will not make one more document. Fine, go there. I will not say D zero one ship confirmed documents. Docs and go there. And the usage is for what happens a ship confirmation now. Fine, go there. So click on sequence on and go there. It is for what happens a shipping execution now. Fine, go there. Shipping execution. In the shipping execution, what happens? I will not say pick slip report or something like that. Fine, go there. It's okay. Fine, I will now put something. Uh, pick slip report in PDF output. Fine, go there. I will now go for four copies. Now. So create your own set now of the what's called your. Uh, Ship confirmation documents as well as pick confirmation document. If anybody knows about where to do it, which is the task name, please tell me. I'm not aware of it now. Afterwards, what happens? You go there, go to the shipping, and then you go to the what's called setup, and then shipping parameters now. So whatever document set is available here, what happens? You can very well put on the shipping parameters. 
So I'm now opening up a shipping parameters. I go to the pickles area. Here, what happens? The document I have to print, fine, go there, D01. And then give it a document will be coming. And then the shipping transaction part, what happens? You are having the document set over here, fine, D01. It is a ship confirmation document. So I can populate it. So as and when you perform the pick release, what happens? This will be printed on the printer. And then as and when you do it, what happens? It will be printed on the printer for ship confirmation actually. So I don't know how to create this two things. Right? If anybody knows it, any, if anybody find it out, please uh, educate me so that I will now educate everybody else. Now, I'll now go there. So uh, uh, before we go for the shipping parameters, actually, that is the ultimate one. So before we go for it, what happens? We go there and then try to do this now. Fine. So this is the one where it is not saying something, but what happens? I'm not very clear upon this one. Man, a shipping document, document, job set rule. It's a job set rule. It is not saying. I go there, click on it, and then I will now put this one. Paste it over there now. Okay, okay, now. <clears throat> Manage ship, ship document set rule fine. Go there, click on it now. Fine. Just cleanly watch. If I'm making a mistake, please immediately correct me. Here, what happens? I go there. Let me create it now. Fine. Let me create a new rule now. Fine. There's a job set rule and click on create a new rule now. This is called a visual information builder actually. The visual information builder is now coming up like anything in each and every activity as such in Fusion now. One by one, they are introducing it actually. So, manage ships document uh, uh, job set rule I'm going to create now. <coughs> So this is a very important one because what happens is we have to print appropriate ones upon pick confirmation as well as ship confirmation. So we have we must know about which document you have to what happens work upon, and then do it as such now. <clears throat> so manage shipping document set rules. I'm now going to create now. So let us go and then create this rule first of all. So is what is, I will not give what happens. I will not give enter description on this. No point. I will not say what happens. D zero one. I will not say pick confirm document set. Click on okay now. I'm not done. How come it is coming as a what's called uh, as a if then else condition? I don't understand. No point. Click on it. No point. Go there. Click on this now. Here, what happens? I will not say uh, pick confirm. <coughs> it is not there. Is not asking for a what happens. You have to find out the what happens the conditions. There is no listing of the conditions actually. If the ship to organization, fine, ship from organization, I will not say if the ship ship from organization is going to be so and so and go there. I will not put a value over here now. <clears throat> is equal to what happens? I will not say D011 now. Is a capital D011. Click on search now. Click on it now and go there. I will not give okay now. If this is a condition, what happens? Click on OK now. Then what happens? I have to print this now. Fine. Fine. The ship organization is there. Fine. Click on then now. And then do. <clears throat> I will now try to find out the print actually. Fine. Go there. New action, I'm going to put it now. Fine. Go there. Click on it now. This is a new one which has come in a release 13 actually. Uh, Sindhil, are you aware of this now? Because how we are printing the documents upon picking and then shipping now. No, sir. This is a new screen, sir. Mm, new screen. No, we, are, <laughs> we are using task, task form only, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a new screen now. Fine. So select an action now. Fine. Go there. Document job set. Fine. I will not choose the document set job set now. Then go there. I will now try to print this document set job set now. Pick release documents or ship confirmation documents. Now. So let me put the ship confirmation document now. Fine. Go there. And then I will now choose my. See, there is the only thing which is not coming up over here now. I am unable to, what happens, choose this now. Fine. Uh, my, uh, what happens, you go there. Ship confirmed documents is the one. So, what are all the things to be printed on the ship confirmation document? Nowhere it is there actually. Fine, click on OK now. Fine, go there. Because it's a very important one for the end customers to print it as and when the activity is completed. Sir, mm, sir in, the if, in the if condition, why don't you select document job set there? Document job set. Fine, go there. Yes. Go there. Uh, ship from organization now. Fine. Here you are saying document. Oh, what is the ship confirmation? No, fine. I will not say ship confirmation document set. There is no such thing at all here. Sir, just a document job set, sir. Docu. Is not coming. So you make an R&D on this, no, fine. Yeah, uh, sure, sir. Sure. sir. Uh, then I will not see. Have we run any job something like that, Nana? Uh, no, it will come automatically. Upon ship confirmation, what happens is this has to run and then it will be printing the documents actually. That's yeah, what I learned. I read it in one of the documents actually. 
So if you are doing it, what happens? Uh, these documents will be printed actually. So uh, I, because another way I have a printer, I cannot uh, see it. And the concurrent is failing actually. The ship confirmation uh, document is concurrent is failing because uh, there is some mistake somewhere. Right? It's not very clear upon me. Right? The new one which has been introduced in uh, release 13 actually. I click on save and close now. Fine. So now what happened? The rule is now made. I, I now made the pick is actually ship confirmation. Fine. Click on save and close now. Somebody make an R&D and then try to do it. Now I click on the rule and then I will now make it as active now. Fine. So let us now make it as active rule. And then I will now give a start date also. Fine. Give a start date. I will now give a start date. Click on now. And then click on save and close now. <clears throat> it is not done. And now what happens? The rule is now ready. You can now see the green tick mark. Fine. It is already. Now you have to publish it. And click on publish by which what happens the rule gets published. The visual information better is an excellent tool, but what happens we have to know all the attributes. There is no listing of the attributes, that is the biggest problem. So, how, how we can effectively use we have to see. So, these two what are the big confirmation documents and ship confirmation documents are so easy in EVIS, but what happens they have introduced the visual information builder for this now. So, through which what happens you get to it now. Fine. Somebody make an RD and then educate all of us about how to print it now. Fine. I will not show you an error here now. When you are doing the ship confirmation process, it will be ending an error now. So this also I'm not doing it actually. So similarly, what happens? This is a ship confirmation job set rule, and then this is a ship uh, output preferences. Okay, here also what happens? There is something in the preferences. What happens? We have this now manage shipment document output output preferences now and go there. So we have a preferences over here now. Fine, click on the manage shipping document output preferences. We go there and then set up the preference over here. That will now say you how do you want to send it? Do you want to send it by email or what happens? Do you want to give me fax or print or whatever it is. It it has got all the preferences over there now. So I will not give a plus now. Fine, let me call plus. Then I will do it now. Click on plus now. The job set name. Fine, go there. And drop it down. So it's again ship confirmation documents on this. What happens? You go there. Job name. Drop down. Print a bill of lading report or what is this? Fine, go. Okay. Your mic is on now. I know. Mute it. So print of uh, print bill of lading report. I'm not doing it. Fine layout. What happens? I'll not say bill of lading layout report. And then uh, what happens? We see the format. I'll not say HTML format now. Start it is okay. Fine. Attach document. You can even attach a document. And then I will not give a save and close. Fine. This is a create, create shipping document. You got us. So here we have got only two things. One is what the bill of lading report as well as what happens. Your packing slip report. Only one of them we can print. Or I don't know whether you can make multiple lines or not. Fine. So multiple lines can also be made. Fine. Now save and close. So save and close by which order on the print bill of lading report upon ship confirmation. I'm going to print now. In the output preferences that we are given now. Fine. Maybe with the plus we can even do the other one also. Fine, go there. Now here, what happens? How to print fine? Click on plus now. Fine. You're going to the bottom. What happens? You go there, click on plus now. The preferences for this now. Go there. The user, drop it down. <clears throat> okay, I will know how to put the user now. Fine, go there. It's a D01 underscore EMP. Find the user now. Find job role. Oh, what is this? D01. I'm going to click on search now. Or EMP. And then click on search now. <clears throat> uh, EMP D01. I'm not coming. Ah, I don't know. Okay, now. The user has been given now. And then uh, job role is not. Organization is what? Drop down. Oh, it is a uh, inventory organization. Right? It is a capital D 011. And then you have tab now. So the printer, if you have, you can even attach the printer. Fine. Sub inventory is not required as a number. Orientation is portrait. The number of copies is one page is one. Email server. Fine. Go there. I'm going to say default email now. The default email, which I'm giving it now. And then from <coughs> Nana, uh, the two, maybe what happens, nana.app60 at uh, gmail.com. The from also I will not put it as a, a email no? in the end for nona at gmail.com because the nona of a project the printing is a very important activity actually. Okay, when well, it's easy, and then what happens? A message, what happens? A ship confirmed documents, ship confirmed docs. Subject also I will not put the same thing. Subject also. Okay, when I will not save and close. This is what, this is what the output preferences have been set. But it is again failing. Fine. So this is this may be an important activity as far as the customer is concerned now because he has to print it now. Fine. So try to find out where exactly the mistake is and then how to do it now. Fine. Go there. So in the ship confirmation is now giving you only two documents. One is the bill of lading as well as what happens. The other one is the uh, one. I click on done now. It's all done. <clears throat> but it's still not complete. I try to find out. Now we will now do the shipping parameters.
that is the final one. So we will not take away. So we will now create the release sequence rule, pick slip grouping rule, ship confirmation rule, release rule, and then the shipping documents, and then finally, what happened the shipping parameters. So we will now go there and then do the shipping parameters. We have to create the shipping parameters. So manage shipping parameters now. Shipping parameters has to be set for both the orgs actually. For each and every org, we have to set the point for the D011 and then you tap. So the first org, I'm choosing it, and then I'm going to set it up now. It's almost similar to what we have in Evil's not, not much of a change actually. Uh, you go there and then here the ship confirmation rule. Fine, it is a D01 and then give it add And then weight and volume are required for what happens here. Uh, OTM actually, orbital transportation management needs it now. So we have to give something now. Fine, I don't have any weight and I am now giving some quantity class, doesn't matter. So some class is required and such. Fine, otherwise, it will, not, it will not accept it all. If you don't give it, what happens? It will not throw another lecture. So if you don't give it, I'll not show you. Fine, go there. It will not be possible for us to save at all. So you go there. And then if you give a save, it will not throw all the errors. Fine. There's no saying staging submit is required. Fine. Go there. It will not give a staging submit. Go there. Is a stage is the one. Fine. So there is a mandatory field now. Fine. You give a save now. So click on save now. <clears throat> it's not throwing plenty of errors on this. Fine. Because what happens of the what happens, the weight and volume is not there. Fine. The pick sequence and the group is not fine. So this is required actually. Go there. So it is required from ODM perspective, and then ODM will be having you find all the unit submitters for them actually. So I'm just putting some quantity, some classes required. So it's okay. <clears throat> Click on it and then make it as a quantity now. Now, if you give a save, whatever number of errors will be coming down now. Now it's come to three now. Now pick uh, the release sequence rule and other things are not done. Fine, go there, go down and then see if nothing there. The release sequence rule is a mandatory one. Fine, go there. I will not put the D01. And then here also, what happens? I will not put the D01 PSGR. RSR and PSGR are not put on fine. So this much is not done. So if you give a save again, what happens? The more the one more will be there actually. Oh, is not showing. So previously, what happens? The ship set behavior has to be either one warning or information or error. So it is not there. And then the ship set, I am unable to do it now. Fine. Uh, I will not show it to you in EBS now. Ship set, I am unable to do. I, I don't know where exactly to find the ship setting. Uh, what happens? The ship set, arrival set, and fulfillment sets are there. But how to do this in Fusion, I am not able to understand now. Fine. So now this is all set now. The packing is now automatically created for the D011. Fine. So that is coming over here now. So you will now see the release sequence rule. Fine. I don't know what happened. You go there. Keep it outside. Fine. The staging sub has been given now. Fine. Go there. Click on it. And then click on save now. Fine. This much is submission has now got saved actually. It has now got saved. Fine. Go there. So that's it. So with this much of information, what happened? The shipping parameters are now fully set. Now fine, go there. So this is for D zero one one R. Fine, give a save and close, and then I will not do it for the second order also. Shipping so, method not required. Shipping method is not required. Fine. Uh, shipping method is not required. It will not pick up from the uh, sales order itself. Now fine, go there. Shipping method is not required. Uh, uh, here, what happened? The ship confirmation rule is there. You now see where the shipping method is there. Uh, shipping. This is not required. This is for what happens? The release management actually. This shipping method, FOB, and then freight terms and customers are for release management. Actually, we're going to group it. Actually, yeah. the grouping is for release management, and the release management is yet to come. Fine, infusion will be coming very soon, and that will be coming very soon. So, release management is yet to come. So, <clears throat> so moreover, sir, uh, if you want to default uh, this shipping method from sale order to checklist form, means you need to enable that checkbox, sir. Which checkbox? This is the one, huh? Shipping method, yes, sir. Oh God, fine. Is a new is a news to me. Fine, go there. So please, in the in whatever, if he enable it, he is saying that what happens from the sales order form, the shipping method will be defaulted to this place. No, fine. I will now remove it and then see the check, make a check of it. No, fine. See whether it works or not. Fine, go there. So uh, Sindhu is saying this has to be enabled for defaulting from the sales order to pick list form. We will now see without which whether it defaults or not. I think it will default. Fine, go there. No see. So uh, it is all done now. Fine, go there. Uh, uh, everything has been done. Fine, you want save and close now. Fine, my shipping parameters is now coming. Now we can very well do the ship confirmation of our sales order. Actually. So we have already created the infinite safely, and then what happens? Is we have set up this admin profiles, and then what happens? Is I create a sales order, and then now what happens? Is fulfill a sales order by shipping. So we are going to fulfill it now. So we will now fulfill the sales order by shipping it now. So I will now go to this one. I will now query my yesterday sales order now. Activity on shipping is now set up now. I go there, go to the order management. It is a four nine one two three is the one which yesterday created. Now I go there. Four nine one two three is the one. Give it tab now, and then click on search now. So this is a sales order which you created yesterday. You go to the go to the actions, and then here what happens? You go to the switch to fulfillment view. Switch to fulfillment view. In the fulfillment view, what happens? You go to the fulfillment lines, and then click on the order orchestration number now. So I go to the fulfillment lines. I go for the now the distributed order orchestration number. I'm clicking on it, and then I will now have a look at the Gantt chart. 
So in the orchestration plan is a Gantt chart. Fine, go there. It is now awaiting shipping. Fine, go there. So the state is awaiting shipping. Let us now do the shipping of this now. Fine, of this order. Fine, go there. It is done. Four nine one two three. I will now go there. Right click and then duplicate. Fine, I'm going to duplicate. It. So we are duplicating it now. Fine, go there. I will now go there. Go to the inventory. Go to the inventory management. And then here, what happens? You go there. You click on it. And then here, you go to the shipping. Drop it down and then choose the shipments. Now. Fine, shipments. And it is strongly recommended for order, whatever sales orders you go for managed shipment lines, and then for order, transfer orders you go for managed shipments. So you go there. So go to the managed shipment lines now. I click on the managed shipment lines. <clears throat> and then I will now query on this one. And go there 49123. And then I will now drop it down and then choose one of the values and then click on the search. Now it shows now what happens that we can very well create a shipment now. And here, what happens that we are now going to do the what? If you go on and see this now, <clears throat> the shipping rules on this one. Uh, if you go to the shipping now, fine, go there. So before we create the moment request pixel, what happens? We'll now create a shipment. Now. Fine, shipment number is going to be given. Fine, go there. So let us go there and then create a shipment. Fine, there. click on auto create shipment. So the moment you click on auto create shipment, a shipment number is now created. Three nine zero zero three is now created. Fine, click on OK. Now three nine zero zero three is there. So for this three nine zero zero three, what happens? We will now launch the pick release now. And go there. So we will now launch the pick release. So since it's all totally automatic, what happens? It will now confirm the picks also in one go, and then it will now go to the stage. Fine. So if you see this now, fine here. Uh, uh, if you have a look at it now, it will now go to the staged area. From the ready to release, what happens? It will now go to the stage one automatically. So if you go there and then see this now, fine, go there. So you can now see that what happens? The status is now what ready to release. Now. Ready to release. It will now go to the moment you launch the pick release. It will now go to the stage zone. So click on what happens actions and then go to pick release. So once when you pick it, what happens? It will go to stage actually because we have sufficient quantity only. So concurrent okay, and the concurrent is running. And click on okay now. So wait for some time and then afterwards what happens? If you click on the shipment number itself, or do you have any refresh icon here? That is not there here. Refresh icon is not there. Okay, now what happens? You can now see the status will now go to what staged actually. Line status will now progress to stage. Fine. Click on the hyperlink on the shipment now. Fine. Click on the hyperlink on the shipment now. Fine. I go there. You can go there and see this one. It is now staged. Now we can very well perform the ship confirmation activity on this. One. Now the activity of pick release is now completed. Now perform the ship confirmation. Now. So by which what happens? It will now start to move towards the customer now. So here what happens? We have now done in this way. Fine, go there. We are done in this. Uh, what's called interface top. Here what happens? He is now in this path. Now. ITS will now run automatically. That is called send shipment advice will now run. And then it will now go to the interface, and then finally, what happens? The sales order will now progress to ship. So, this one, Sai told me about the customer acceptance has come in uh, Fusion also. So, once when he sends me a document, what happens? I will now go through this and then I try to simulate this situation also. And this is a very excellent situation. So, customer acceptance. After customer acceptance only, what happens? We have to run the send shipment advice manually actually. So, only when you run it, what happens? The sales order will now progress to Here, once when you do the ship confirmation, what happens? Upon con it will now go to the confirmed, and then what happens? It will now, it'll now go to the interface also automatically. So, the send shipment advice concurrent will be running automatically, and then the sales order will be progressed to ship. So, we go there and then see this. It will now open up one more tab. I have a question on customer acceptance. Huh? I have a question on customer acceptance. You yeah. see it in EBS. Uh, you said that you know customer acceptance. Uh, once customer accepted, then ITS needs to be run. Yes. But I have seen a scenario where ITS is inter, uh, you know a shipment line is interfaced, and then yes. you do the. So there are four ways of customer acceptance. One is what implicit before billing, and then explicit before billing, and then similarly implicit after billing, and then explicit after billing. And uh, uh, just have a look at my record now. Fine. I think. ITS is now integrated along with the customer acceptance in my demonstration. Basically, I have given an email demonstration. Fine. Download the record and then have a look at it now. Fine. So that is already integrated on this. And in Fusion, I don't know how it's being done. And I have to learn it actually. So in EBIS, refer my EBIS record on the customer acceptance. Okay. Okay. Because I am using the you know inter the interface and then uh, customer acceptance. That is all I'm saying now. Fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, who is this? Yes, sir. Tushar, okay, fine. Tushar. So, Tushar, you are doing it now, fine. It's almost same, fine. You download my, what happens, EBIS documentation on customer acceptance. I think oh, both of them are integrated in my demonstration. Okay, okay. I'll check it. I've done it long time. So, you can just see that both of them are integrated in, in the EBIS. And here, I am to learn this now, this part. So, now, once when I ship confirm, what happens, you now see that what happens, it will be going to ship it after that. Send shipment advice is run now. So, in this place, what happens, you go there and then have a look at the uh, what happens, scheduled process now. 
So once when I write what happens, a send shipment and those will be running. And then what happens here? Print pick slip report has succeeded. I'm fine whether it's good uh, because of what happens, sitting something else not fine. It has to print the pick slip reports actually. It has to print the pick slip report. And then uh, this has to be seen only with the printer or something like that. Not fine. But the, that setups I told you not fine. That is not perfectly correct actually. Fine. You have to find out whether anything has to be modified on this on the on the documents basically. Because in one of the you know, the instances, what happens? They were very particular about the documents to be printed on the pick confirmation as well as ship confirmation basically. Now let us go there. This place. What happens? No click. What happens? No staged. Now what I'm going to do it is what I'm going to confirm it. So now here, what happens? I can say how much is going to be shipped confirmed. Now. Or otherwise, what happens? Three nine zero zero three. I can again query now. Fine, okay, I'm cancel now. So once when the shipment number is created, now what you can do is you can go to the this area. Now. Can go to the, go to this place. And then now what happens? You go to the manage shipments. Shipment number is ready means we can go there now. Otherwise, what happens from here? You can do it now. Here also you can do it. Can go there. Click on three nine zero zero three. I'm going to make a query now. Can go there. So three nine zero zero three. And then you would have, click on search. So once when you search for it, what happens? It now show you. Now, how much you're going to ship confirm? So depending upon the, what happens, uh, the availability of material and then uh, all the packing materials, everything, what happens, he's saying, okay, one is required, he's now going to see one also. In the ship confirmation quantity, what happens, the requested quantity is one, the shipped quantity is one, and then you will now press on ship confirmation. So click on ship confirmation. Now, it has been confirmed on the vehicle, and then what happens, it's now giving you a warning, the weight is not there, the volume is not there, they are all required for transportation management, actually. You can ignore the warnings, basically. whatever warnings is not showing you on the weight and volume. And you can only click on yes now, find the warning message, you can ignore it and click on yes now. So by which what happens, it gets shipped confirmed. Now you can see a series of concurrents running now. Right? So the concurrent which is now going to run as a send shipment advice will now interface it to order entry actually. So now it's running, one by one is running. <clears throat> now you see ship confirmed documents is now going to print now. If the ship confirmation documents is not proper, then the send shipment advice, the one which is going to interface it to what happens your order entry actually. So if you defer this on the shipping parameters, on the ship confirmation rule, what happens? It will not run at all. You have to only manually run for the shipment number actually. The shipment number has to be run manually for the zone. So all these things are now running. See, my ship confirmation document is now ending in error actually. We had to analyze this and then do it now. Even the print billing or bill of lighting report is also error actually. So there's a configure. So there is some mistake on the configuration of the printing actually. Now this is running now. Fine, go there. So once the send shipment interface is now completed, what happens? It will be progressing to ship right. You can also see the sales order getting progress to ship right. So it's not complete at fine. Go there, go to the place, and then here, what happens? Say, go to the what's called you go to the manage orders and then refresh the screen. It is awaiting shipping now. Fine, it will now progress to ship. Fine, you can now see it. So now the DO is not complete now. Fine. The billing invoice is now started. Fine. It is now shipped actually. So the shipping is now started. The invoicing has not started. Only when the invoice gets completed, the DOO gets completed actually. Now we will now start to do this. Something. Click on refresh now. <coughs> go there. And then here, if you go and click on refresh again. Go there. It is now started. And then it will not go further at all. Because what happens? We are not set up the AR at all. AR is not set. And so what happens? We will be getting AR like that. <coughs> It's not trying to search for it now. Fine, go there. It has, it has now got a message error. Fine, click on it now. Fine. So if you click on this error message, <clears throat> it will show you that what happens there. We have an issue now here. So the error message is going to say what happens there. Create bill of line. Billing lines is now ended an error because what happens there. The orchestration process is now giving some error actually because error is not set. So one minute it, what happens? It will not do this now. Fine, it will not send to the interface tables of AR actually. Fine, click on okay now. Fine. Don't worry about this error as now. Fine, is not set actually. So now let us set the AR and then what happens? We will now complete the cycle of what happens. O to C actually. Fine, go there. So we'll now go to this version to find go there. Now the receivable setup is now going. Now billing error is now complete. Now what happens? Add the accounts receivables role to the one. Fine, I'll now go to the security console and then I'll now add the accounts receivables manager. This is more than sufficient for just pushing it to the air now. Fine. If you want to push it just into air, whatever this is sufficient. Fine. Click on the now, come out of it now. And then we'll now do this. Fine. Click on the now. <clears throat> go out and then here I will now click on it and then I will now go to the security console. You go to the security console now. Fine. Go to the security console. <clears throat> And then add the accounts receivables manager for this employee. And that is the only thing which is required actually. 
for just pushing it. But for processing it, whatever we need everything now. And from okay now, accept it. And then go to the users and then query the user actually. So user is what uh, I'm not going to go to the user find is a D01 underscore EMP is a user now find for that. Click on enter now. So D01 EMP. <coughs> we query the user now. So click on the user, open it up. So here, go down. And then now, what happens? I have to go to edit now. If I click on edit and then add the role now. Accounts receivables manager is more than sufficient now for pushing it into AR actually. Go there. Click on add role. So the role name is what? It is accounts receivables manager. Is accounts receivables manager. Or you see, and then choose this now. Avora, I'm choosing it now. I click on add role membership. It's not done. I click on OK. Click on done. And then save and exit now. I click on save and close now. And then give the data access for this also. So click on done. Come on up it now. Now we have to give what happens the data access also. So we'll know how to give and they add data access also. And data access also has to be added. And go there. So I will now go to this place. I go to the setup and maintenance now. <clears throat> go there, click on it, and then here you go to the search now, and then go to the manage data access now. Find manage percentage data percentage. This percentage, and then let me query my for my user. I'm going to add it. I'm going to the manage data access for users. Now. So let me add it directly. So click on plus now. So for my user, I'm going to add it now. Find my user is what D01 underscore EMP is my username now. Drop it down and the accounts receivables manager. Accounts and then the receivables manager. Choose it now. Drop it down and now choose the business unit and then I'm put D01 and then give it down. And then click on save and close by which what happened the role is added and click on done. So this is now done. So we are now completed 107 step now and we go to 108. Now we have to add the billing and revenue management to the assigned business unit business function. I'll now go to the FSM first of all, and then assign business unit business function. Click on the now. So let me go there and then add it. Now. So click on it. And then I go to the setup and maintenance. So here on the financials side, fine, on the financials, you know, go and then query the task line, assign percentage. BUSI percentage, BUSI percentage. I'm not going to query it now. Assign business unit business function. So the scope is, is a scope related entity, and so what happens? We have to go only by FSM or your projects actually. So I will not go there. The scope is already selected. Fine. Click on the assign business unit business function. Let me enable this functionality for the receivables actually. So for the receivables, what happens? We had to add what? Uh, we had to add billing and revenue management as we added. Fine. Billing and revenue management as we added. And go there. So here in the bottom, what happens? I will not add the billing and revenue management. Fine. Sales is only added. Now I'm adding it. This is the basic requirement for AR. There are so many other things are there which I don't know. So learn it from the financials. They will not teach you. So the billing and revenue management has been put a tick mark. Click on save and close. Your warning is coming. Click on okay. In reality, what happens? We're doing everything in the beginning itself, right? not in a piecemeal fashion. Only for learning it, what happens? We are now adding it one by one and then learning it now. Now, the system options is a mandatory one even for order management actually in EVIS. In EVIS, if the system options are not set, what happens? It will not work at all. So here, system options are not mandatory for your order management actually. It is required only for receivables now. Whereas in EVIS, if the system options are not set, Order management itself will not work in EVIS. Here it's not so, it has been decoupled now. We'll go there and then set up the minimal one. I don't know. So whatever parameters I'm seeing, I'm going to set it up now. Fine, go there. Click on now. I'll now go there. Go to the search now. Click on search now. I've now pasted it over here now. Manage receivable system options. Fine, go there. Click on it. So let me give a plus now. Fine, click on plus. I'm going to set it up. So my business unit is what? D01. And then give a tab now. Just watch keenly. If any of you knows any of the setups, please tell me. We'll not do it also. Fine, go there. This is all coming. Fine. Split amount is zero. Fine. Days ends. Okay, fine. Go there. So application rule set, drop it down. I will not choose something now. Fine, go there. I will not choose what happens. Uh, uh, line and tax flow rate. And the discount basis. I will not say invoice amount. Fine. They're all mandatory fields. I'm choosing it now. Fine, go there. I don't know other things basically. Uh, go there. Nothing is mandatory here. Fine, go there. Here, realized again account. I have got only uh, one good account. I will not put this now. Fine, go there. So wherever accounts is asking, I'm putting this account now. Realize loss account, I'm putting this account. These are all asset accounts actually, but in reality, it will be tax account. I will not put the same one now. Uh, cross currency rounding account is a mandatory one. I'm putting it now. Go there. 
anything else is there and go there item validation organization is a very important one i will not put my master or go again of and 010 and give it up item validation organization it is a d01 and click on search now ah, organization name of and the d01 and the small d and click on search now it is not coming how come in the advanced we go there <coughs> starts with d01 click on search now yeah it's coming come on yaar not a good search at all it's not done uh, it's not done can go there is there any other thing which is mandatory will not see now <coughs> grouping rule drop it down i will not make it as a default now and this is the last area can go there okay nothing else seems to be mandatory here open with it all filled up with a lock file message level okay you know say 99 because there is a mandatory one <clears throat> nothing else is mandatory here open with it for us we log give a save now and go that save and close by which what happens for our business unit is not created okay so save and close now oh this is the one tax invoice printing options uh what can be and total tax only We go there. Give us save now. Okay, save. give us save now. First of all, I think it is save. So click on save and close now. It's not done. If you query for your own find, go the D zero one and then give it a tab now. If you go there and then search for it now, let it drop it on. Then put the problem is inside. Tabbing over is not coming now. D zero one. And then, if you give a search, it has to show me the receivable system options not set. Actually, it is not set. So, system options is not set. I click on done now. Come out of it. Then, what happens? We have to what happens in FS manage business unit assignment set. Fine. So, the RDS is already set for everything. We already set everything for all the receivables actually. Fine. That is already done. The beginning itself. Now, we have to go for the manage transaction types. Transaction types. We have to go there. We don't go there. Along with the manage transaction types, we are going to manage transaction types. Entry now, click on it. So we are going to get the manage transaction type. So click on plus now, and it is now created. So the transaction type set, it is now asking to drop it down. Uh, I will now say my reference data set D zero one. Reference data set I am going to put it now. The legal entity is D zero one, and then give a tab now. The name I will now say is a D zero one. What happens there? This is I am going to use it for importing basically. Find D zero one. Import fine uh, uh, transaction type transaction. Type. This is for importing it from order management. I think the character limitation there. I want to take off it and then put the description. So transaction class fine. I will not say it's a, what a, what a, what is called invoice now. The transaction class is for invoice. Transaction series is what open now. The from date is okay. Fine generate bill is yes now. And then afterwards uh, open receivables okay. Fine all these things are okay. Uh, is a possible sign. I'm not going to give the accounts. I'll be giving the accounts on the auto accounting rules. Actually, the payment terms I will not drop it down. I will not make it as a thirty net now. Okay, fine. This much is sufficient on this now. I'll go there. The transaction type is now done. Actually, any other things? Okay, fine. Give us even close by which what happens? We are now created our transaction type. If you go and then put your D zero one, and click on search now. It will show you the thing. So it's open. Click on done now. Next activity is what transaction source. Go there. We will now create the managed transaction source over here now. And go there. So paste it over here now. Find it. Managed transaction source. <laughs> so managed transaction source over and go there. So now here, uh, what happens? I will not give a plus now. Fine. I am going to create the transaction source for this now. And click on plus. So here, uh, the name I will not put as what D zero one import uh, transaction source. So the description now can take it all right and put it in this one. So the type is not manual; it is imported actually. Fine, I am now making it as imported now, not manual now. It is an imported one. I am going to lot transaction number. It is a two thousand. I am going to give it now. I am going to give it now. You know. So reserved credit credits. Fine, nothing is meant to you know. Leave it as such now. Go down, go down. And then uh, the grouping rule. Nothing is mandatory. Can leave it as such now. Fine, because there are so many. Ah, uh, from date is mandatory. Huh? From date is mandatory. Uh, oh. Fine, okay. Fine. From date is mandatory. Don't give it. That's okay. <clears throat> then thing is mandatory. Okay. Fine. So there are so many setups for that. If you learn the receivables training, what about they will not teach you everything. All this now. 
Sir, transaction source set is mandatory, sir. Why is that? Transaction source set. Type there. Um, sir, no. first one, sir. General information, first, sir. General information. Okay. Yes. Oh God, I have given it, but it is. I don't know how it has gone down. Oh, I have not given it. I think I have not given it. So I am not giving it. I have given it another one. Month. Legal entity is also mandatory. Fine, remember, legal entity, even though it's not there, it is a mandatory one. Legal entity is a must actually, because I tried once without a legal entity, it didn't work actually. And then one of my financial gate was not If you don't do it, importing will not work at all. <laughs> so even though they are not put a mandatory, because the transaction source need not have to have a legal entity. Fine, that is what they say. But if you are going to bring it from do DOO, whatever legal entity is a mandatory. Then when I failed, he corrected me actually. So put this in no open I'll pass. Okay, fine. This is not sufficient. Fine. Click on save and close now. Fine. That is all done now. Okay. So, sir, this setup is needed uh, to create the invoice, right? Yes. This is required for pushing from what happens to OMDA actually. We are learning it, only not to uh, Remit to address is an important one from the EBIS basically. So, but I don't know whether it is important or not, but I, I, I always used to create it actually. Also. Remit address is an important one. If you don't do it, what happens? It will not, AR will not work properly at all. So, manage remit to address. Let me go and give a plus now. Fine. Click on plus. So let me create a remit address. Go the country address. I will not say what was D01 remit to address. City is New York. You have to have one remit to address in place as such. And then go the 10020. Go to the Yeah, seven close remit, whatever we got. Remit to address. A remit to address set is what your D01 and then a reference data set actually to get so for this reference data set one remit to address is now created actually. So this is now done fine. Go there now. Auto accounting is a very important one. Fine. We have to go there and then set up all these things. Fine. Take out the count. We have to do it for every one now. I asked my financial guy, you have to do it. Fine. If you even if you don't do it for one, it will not work properly now. So you go to the manager contact auto accounting goes now. So here, what happens? I will not give a plus. Each and everything has to be done. <coughs> it's a very tedious process now. So D01 is the one you have to have now. So here, if you drop down for each and everything we had to give, except the deferred tax. That's what he told me. Except deferred tax, you can do it. Deferred tax is okay, but remaining ones we had to have an account. Now. So I will not choose the first one now. So first one, what happens? I have to give only. A, there is a what happens? A multiple ways of doing it now. So he told me that what happens? Since we are doing it like this, now what happens? You uh, you give the values basically. That is what it is. You can even give a source also and do it now. Fine, that is a complex one actually. So give a straight away value. Fine, go there. There's no thousand. So that's what it is. So I have done for the auto 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 invoice clearing. Ten hundred and thousand. Fine, create another one. Click on create another and drop it down. Next is what bills receivable. Go there. It is ten. And then if you give a tab, it doesn't come at all. Fine, go there. You have to click on it and then do it. There's thousand. <coughs> Go there, click on create another. Second one is now complete. Can go there. So this is not required. So I go for the third one now. Fills by factored bills receivables now. Go there. So click on ten now. Go there hundred. And then thousand. Click on create another. One. So factored bills receivables no done. And go there. Go to the fright now. Now these accounting rules coming from where? Uh, these accounting rules will be used for auto creation of the invoices actually. When you're getting invoice from OMDR. Yeah. Coming from where? Coming from where means I couldn't understand your question actually. Uh, they, they, we have to give the appropriate account for each and every activity on the account type actually. If these accounts are not having an account, what happens? It will not import at all into the AR. Click on create account. Now, my question is it's uh, from. Uh, Purchasing or ordering it like that. It is only when you import it from order management, these accounts are required actually. Okay. okay. I given only up to freight now. I think I have given only up to freight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Receivable has to be done. Yeah, receivable has to be done. Thank you. The 10 now. <clears throat> Go for 100 now. Click on it. 10,000. Click on create now. Go there. Receivables is now done. Remit. Remit. Remitted bills are receivables now. 10. 100. 
get concrete at all. Remittances is not completed. So we go for the revenue. <coughs> Tax ten hundred one thousand create hundred. So three more are there unbuilt receivables ten hundred. Then click on this thousand. Two more are pending, all is not unearned revenue. Ten hundred thousand. So the last one I'm going to give it now as far as auto money is concerned and drop it up. Is the unbuilt one, unbuilt revenue. How many are there? One, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Whatever which one is not given out. The last one I'm giving it now. So it has to be 11 totally. 10. 100. 1, 2, 3, 4, And that's it. Give it done now. So once you give it done, what happens? You have to see all the 11 are here now. I'll go there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, all the 11 are there actually. Give a save and close. Fine. Click on save and close by which whatever. The auto accounting rules are set. Next activity is what? We had to open the periods. We don't open the periods now. I click on that now. So we'll now go to the GL. Click on it now. And then we go to the general ledger now. And then open the periods. General ledger and then once again maximize it with the F11 now. You click on it and then go to the general ledger now. And go there. Go to the period close. So general ledger period close the one from which what happens? I'm going to open the periods. First GL period and then afterwards what happens? The receivables period. GL period is already open now. The receivable period is never open now. Fine, go there for November. It is already open now. So receivables is now open. Fine, click on the receivables and let me open it. Receivables has to be open. So the first period is what? I will now put a generating now. Go to the generating. And again, okay. The first period is open. Now I will now go on. The selected period will be set as the first period. Afterwards, what happens? They cannot make a change of the first period actually. That is giving a generic warning. We can accept this warning now. And click on okay. And then refresh it. And then wait for the generate to open now. So once when it is open, what happens? You now open up the, the normal period. Fine. You now see February is now future now. And go to the actions and then go to open the target period. And then we will now choose what December 18 is. We can open up. Click on open. It will open it up. So the December will be open now. Fine. You now wait for the period to open. Next activity is what? Uh, 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 manage receivables profile options. This is what told by one of my financials guys. And I'm not very sure about whether this is required or not. And you will not do it because he told me that whatever they said it. Sometimes it will not give you this use invoice will not give a problem now. I don't think anyone will not do it. If I manage the visible profile options. <clears throat> no, refresh it now. I inquired something here and then bits and pieces. What I'm saying, I said it not actually. I'm not having a good knowledge on this. I click on it and then you go to the setup and maintenance now. And then you go there. Click on this now. Now, receivables is also open now. Everything is open. And then you go there. Go to the receivables profile options now. Click on search. And then paste it over here now. And manage the receivables profile option now. So go there, click on it. So here, uh, the profile option he has told me is what is the one. So this has to be set to yes. That's what he's saying now. I'm going to take over it. I will not query for this one. The use invoice profile now. So click on search. <coughs> And then go down, see how look at the fact is already set. The site level is already set to yes, actually. And we have a set to yes. No need to look at what you want. So all the things are set now. Fine. Now we will have to see this now. Fine. Let us know what happens after doing all the setups. You always log out and log in to take the efforts now. Fine. Click on it. Sign out and sign in. Sometimes sign out and sign in is required whenever you make any major setups, actually. So click on confirm now. So we are confirming it. We click on sign in now. Now we will now go there and then have a look at the same sales order now. So go to the order management now. 49123. 49123. And then give a tab. And query for it now. And then go to the fulfillments now. And go, there. go to the view. Switch to fulfillment on view. You also have an X mark now. And go there. Go so here, what happens? I will now run the order invoice. So I will now manage shipments. I find you cancel now. Come on up. 
So we'll not run the uh, import auto invoice now. We'll not see whether it works or not. Otherwise, we had to get a new sales order. Let's click on it. So go there and then we'll not go to the scheduled process and then we'll not run the import auto invoice. So click on schedule new process now. So here, uh, what happens? We import percentage auto percentage and then give it a tab now. So import auto invoice the one and click on search now. So import order invoice and go there. Click on OK. We are going to pass on the sales order as a parameter for this now. Click on OK. We are going to forward the sales order. Now. So here the transaction source is a do. Now. So choose the do now. Uh, distributed order orchestration. The do is the transaction source actually from where it is coming up. So we are choosing this now and go down. And then we will now have the from the sales order number two sales order number four nine one two three four nine one two three. The one so the two numbers also coming and we're going to submit it. Click on submit. So this is not running. We'll now see whether it gets completed successfully or not. So we are importing it now. Probably it must not have even pushed into this place basically because okay, receivables is not set now. So I'm not sure about it now. <clears throat> Nana, is there anything like workflow background process here? Yeah, no, it's not there. My only in EVIS we have the workflow background here. We don't have any. So it will automatically put all the order information to here. Exactly. Yeah. No workflow background basically. Fine. Workflow background is required in EBS for closing the sales order line and then pushing it into the interface tables. Here, the DO itself will now do everything on this. So import order invoice, everything is now completed. It is now notify the feeder system also of the receivable transaction now. We'll now go there and then refresh it. Okay. We'll click on refresh now. So here, what happens if you go and then see on the fulfillment lines? If you click on the fulfillment lines. It was having an error actually. I go there, click on this one. And then here, you go there. And then on the orchestration process, whatever they just started, I go there, click on refresh now. You now see whether it is not complete. You know, shipped actually. It has to go there. That means what? It is not happening actually. Here I am stuck actually. Find how to, what happens, reinitiate this process actually. It has not gone to the order invoice area at all. So it has not gone to the order invoice area at all. So because of which, what happens, it has got stuck actually. So we have to only create a new sales order. Here it says everything is succeeded, succeeded. Fine. Uh, import order invoice by notifying it. And then whatever, there is nothing to process as such in the interface table because it has not pushed it. Fine. It is saying that what happens, uh, this is not there. So since receivable is not set, what happens? Uh, it says create billing lines as the error down. Actually. Use the appropriate orchestration work area. Is what is. So let us now create a new sales order and see now fine. Click on done now. So we have to give one. Sorry. Sir, here we have a repair order. There is one option, sir. Action. Fine. Okay. Uh, action, sir. Here itself, huh? sir. The top action, sir. The top actions. No, 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 sir. Yeah, yeah. I have to go yes, to fulfillment order. I go there. Click on it now. I will now go to the DOO now. In the DOO, and there is no action at all. The top and here we have an action. Or one. No, sir. Uh, that order line itself, sir. So go back, sir. Hold on a second. I will now give it done now on the main line, huh? mm -hmm. Yeah, main line, sir. Click on done now. <clears throat> so now I am in the place. I'm going to the actions now. No, sir. The fulfillment, right? Sir, okay. go to view, fulfill, switch to fulfillment view. Okay. Here, the top the action. Okay. The actions. Sir, you didn't need a error recovery responsibility, sir. There is one option. One oh, role is there. Oh. If you have the error recovery role, I think probably that will do, na? Yes, sir. We have that option, sir. Okay, very good, very good, very good. So if you have an error recovery role, fine, good one, fine. We have to search for it. Right? So can you tell me, send me the role name exactly? So, yeah, sure. Is, yeah. sure. so if you have it, what happens in the action? We have error recovery thing. So by which what happens, we can very well recover it also. Fine. Good, good, good. Fine. So that is the learning point. And now what happens, we will now create a new sales order and process it now. Fine. Go there. Click on it. Fine. Go there. We will now create an order now. <sighs> Nana, do we have copy order here? I think it is there. We can very well do it. An actions yeah. copy or something like that will be there. Yeah, it will be there actually. I think yeah. I have somewhere in the main area itself. We can, in the manage orders, we can do it. We can very well copy the order. Yeah. Oh. Okay. okay. It will be there. I'm going to the customer over here. I will now populate the item over here. I'm going to the D0101. I will now go for three quantities this time. So go for three kilograms. Now. Click on add. <clears throat> oh, 
what happened? The pricing is not coming here now. Why the price is not come now? We are given all items price, no? Why? What is the problem here? Oh God! See, the currency is not at changed actually. Can go there, go to the what's called edit currency details. Now Kenyan shilling is coming on. <laughs> Drop it on them. So when you put this one, what happens? The first activity is this one. Here is the baker on. But now I think uh, okay, if you go on them, tab it out. It will not come. Right? I don't know. Put four quantities and give a tab. Right? Now the price will come. So how to do this? I don't know. Find the currency has to come along with the customer. Actually, I have to go on and change it. Actually, we will now try in the default tomorrow. What happens? We are going to check for the defaulting rules now. Other time, what happens when I when I default this? What happens? The currency also gets default. Problem. No, see, fine. That will be a lab access for you. I am unable to do it now. Click on ahead. <coughs> so the currency has changed. You can go there. Click on it. Click on it. And then here, I don't know. Go to the what's called the rate. I don't know. Go there. I will not say it's a nine or nine. I am not putting a date of nine now. And then I will not go to the supply. And then here I will not put the supply. Again, I can go there. Faros is what nine eighty one. And then give a tab now. What is? Hey, not nine eighty one. So sorry. I was looking at another one. Is a D zero one one. And then give a tab now. And then and the, the code if a name will be coming now. What is? So everything has been set. Oh, again, I can go there. Click on it. So you know, submit the order now. And both quantities. I click on submit the order. <coughs> So 130 is order now, fine. 49130 is order now. And go there, go to this place, and then you switch to fulfillment view. So go to the fulfillment lines, and then click on it now, fine. Go there, click on it, and then it will gradually uh, progress on this now. You go to the orchestration plan, and then how? Hello, so, sir. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. Tell me. One second, sir. Tell me. Sir, order orchestration error recovery manager, sir. That role name, sir. Oh, ho, ho. very good. Order orchestration error recovery manager. Very good. And all of you, please yes, note it down. And then if you add it, you will be having the actions on those things. Yes, sir. We can repair, in, repair any order, sir. Ah, very good. Very good. Order orchestration error recovery manager. All of you announce yourself as a friend of Sendil. He has already implemented a project without GOP. Fine. He knows in and out of it, actually. <laughs> sir, you are always my guru, sir. <laughs> I taught him Evis, but what happens? I am now learning from him order management actually. He is not allowed. And then he will not go to this place now. So click on the home icon and then here we go there. And then go to the inventory now. Ah, the session is expired now. Right click and then duplicate now. Recreate now. So here I will now go to the home icon now. And then go to the inventory now. Man, the inventory, tools, financials, costing, inventory is here. Just click on the inventory. Now. So I go to the shipments and then four nine. Uh, uh, what happens? You go to the shipments now, and then you go to the manage shipments lines now. So what is the order number now? Find is there four nine one three zero is the order number now. Find go to click on refresh now. So it has to go to the awaiting shipping area now. It has now gone to awaiting shipping. Four nine one three zero is the one. You go there. I will not worry for this four nine one three zero, and then give a tap. So click on search now. Oh, this is the one. Bekar. <clears throat> go there. Click on search now. So click on auto create shipment. The shipment will be created now. So a three eight zero zero four is now created. Go there. I will now go to actions and then go to launch pick release now. And pick release is now getting launched. It will now go to the staged area. It will now become staged actually. So click on the shipment number. It will be going to stage now. Wait for it. It is now ready to release now. And go there. And then I have to wait for it. And cancel and then again come over here now. And cancel and then again click on and come over here now. It is still ready to release now. So cancel it. Oh God. There is no God error or not. Somewhere. <coughs> cancel now. <coughs> 38004 is the one. <coughs> what happened? <coughs> when you give a cancel, it is not working at all. <coughs> I will again click on the inventory now. Somewhere some problem has happened now. Click on the inventory. You go there and then click on 
shipments and then you go to the manage shipment lines now. The four nine four nine uh, one three zero, isn't it? Am I correct? One three zero. You click on search now. You go to three eight zero zero four. Click on it now. Now you have been staged actually. Fine, well, there is no stage. I will not say how, how much you are going to ship it. I will not say four quantities I want to ship now. I click on ship confirmation now. I have not requested quantities four. Shipped quantities four now. And then I will not click on ship confirmation now. So by which one of the ship confirmation activity is not complete. Ignore the warnings on wait and volume. I click on yes now. So you go there and then see this now. I go there. Click on it now. In this place, you can now see that. Send shipment advice will be coming now. So afterwards, what happens? It will be going to what? Shipped and then what happens? It has to go to awaiting billing. If AR is now set perfectly, what happens? It has to go to awaiting billing now. Oh, this is got DM. I right click and then you go to the duplicate now. So click on it and then here you go there, go to the uh, scheduled process. The same shipment advice will be running now. So since shipment was building, as soon as it gets completed, what happens? It will be going to ship and then afterwards it will not go to awaiting billing actually. If there is no problem, it will now successfully push it in the mind with a click on refresh now. So it has to go to ship and then afterwards it has to go to awaiting billing. It will now ship now. Fine. It will now progress further now. Fine. It will now go there, progress further and now push it successfully in the AR actually. And go there, click on it now. Refresh it. And then here now. I'm going to click on refresh it. So it has now become shipped now. It has to go to awaiting Billing actually. Click on shipping now. Refresh, refresh. Now it is not trying to push it into AR actually. There is no error message at all. Fine. That means what? It is working perfectly actually. It takes some time. Basically. Maybe some concurrence may run. I think. Fine. Click on it now. Relationship on place. Nothing is running yet. <clears throat> Call the activity. No, no concurrence are running. It has to push into AR now. Yes. It has now become awaiting billing. That means what? It has now pushed into awaiting billing now. Now let us go and then import the invoice now. Fine. Go there. Go to the place now. It is now going to the import. Fine. Click on this now. Fine. Go to the order invoice. Import now. Import order invoice. Import and then order invoice. Click on search now. We are searching for it now. Import order invoice. Import auto. So click on search actually. It is actually searching it actually. So click on search now. Import order invoice. Import order invoice. The concurrent. Click on OK now. Okay. And then the order number I will not pass on, fine. As a four nine one three zero is a one. It is a DO. Drop it down and then choose as a DO. Go now. The from sales order number four nine one three zero. Click on sub. So wait for it to complete. Once when it is completed, what happens? The invoice gets created in the AR and then the line gets closed actually. And there the DO ends. So once when the invoice is now completed, what happens? The line will be getting closed. So it is the responsibility of the CSR, the customer service representative, to close every sales order line. Let us say he is not dealing on say let us say 550 lines. And then every day evening he has to report to the management about how much he has closed. That means what? He has booked the sales order, he has shipped the material, and then payment collection is the responsibility of AR actually. That is not his responsibility. So that is the, what happens, his ultimate target. Closing of the lines, and then closing of the header is the AR's responsibility. They will now collect the payment, they will now apply everything on the AR, they will now complete all the AR activities, the header gets closed. So it's not running, can go there, not know. And then if you refresh it, the line has to get closed. The state of the line has to get closed. Fine. It is build actually. The status has come as build now. Fine. The status has come as build now. And now build actually. And then line also ultimately get closed actually. Click on it now. I refresh it. Go there. <clears throat> and then go to the fulfillment lines. Go there. So here it's closed. It's closed. Fine. So it is build and then afterwards it is closed actually. 
So it's initially built and then afterwards it has not gone to close. So click on done and then come out of it in the main drive now. There, there it is, it's closed now. So click on done and then come to the main one now. You can see the line status is closed now. Fine. The order is still under processing because what happens is payment is not in collected. So the moment you collect the payment and then all complete all the activities in AR, the order also will get closed. So this is a complete what to see cycle now. The line is closed. Any doubts on this now? Tomorrow onwards, we'll be going into tougher, tougher topics. Is now. there any uh, concept like uh, overshipment tolerance? Yeah, overshipment is also possible. No? In the shipment area, there are plenty of uh, functionalities are there. Whatever you have in order, order OA, uh, what happens in EBIS, everything is available in uh, what happens in Fusion. That's what they told me in training. Okay. They have retained almost all the functionalities of Fusion, yeah, EBIS into Fusion actually. Everything has been written. Then you only have to do an R&D. A lot of R&D at this time. Uh, and uh, we will be seeing the advanced shipment concepts in this week, in the, basically. So other name also, we can all see those things. Everything is available. Any other doubts? So try to set up AR also. But of course, when you're working on a vision, you cannot do it now. If you create your own structure, you can uh, think of what I'm setting up the AR also there. <clears throat> Otherwise, it's not possible. I don't know whenever, uh, whenever you are working on the old instance, and then if you find that it is all okay, please inform me. I will inform everybody. I think we have to create the inventory org on the new on the on the on the upgraded instance. From inventory org onwards, we have to create a thing because the structure itself has got changed in the new one. Nana, if I have to see the relevant reports for this uh, sales order, which is the place to see? Uh, hey, Sindhil, uh, regarding the reports, is there any custom reports you have made or otherwise do you have any standard reports over here? Sir, custom reports also possible, sir. Yeah. So, do you have any standard reports for this now, for the, for the people? Sir, even uh, a sales order acknowledgement report, we can see in the sales order. Can sales. you send me the in the mail, what are all the reports? Yeah, sure, sir. Sure. Standard sure. reports are available. Sure, sure. sir. Sure. Yeah, sure, sir. Are these reports are available as a concurrent program or otherwise you have to go to FBDA and then uh, do something, something and then uh, do it or whatever? No, sir. Already we have seeded reports. In that report, we can add our uh, uh, format, sir. Just also. like uh, EBS. You write to me about how to do that, how to check it also, man. I'll know. Possibly. Yeah, sure, sir. Sure, sir. I guess we can do from reports and analytics. Right? Yeah, yeah. Reports and analytics from there you can very well do. I know that now. Uh, that mm -hmm. place, what happens, you can do it now. But uh, uh, since Sindhil has already done it, what happens, you may be having some ready-made reports basically. We'll have a look. Good, then we'll now continue tomorrow on this now. We'll go ahead on this. <clears throat> Bye for now. Bye. 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 Thanks, Rana. Bye. 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 Bye.